So most of our exercise students who have been involved into the nephrology habilitation subject, they have the opportunity to make internships in the dialysis clinics uh, and work with uh, specialized exercise professionals. And we have been involved more than 10 uh, exercise students. And now we are making more partnerships with other dialysis clinics to expand our partnerships to receive more exercise students interested in make internships at the nephrology habilitation area. Uh, also, when we have these exercise students in the dialysis clinics, we are able to personalize the exercise prescriptions better than we do not have them. For example, in one dialysis clinics, uh, one exercise professional is responsible for supervise and prescribe exercise for more than 10 or 12 patients at the same time. So when we have these exercise students involved, we may have more personalized uh, one one uh, supervision. Also, the presence of these exercise students creates a more motivated environment and the patients say it, the dialysis staff say it, that's really good when the exercise students are involved in the dialysis uh, clinic with the patient's treatment. And last but not less important, it's low cost to the dial dialysis unit. So it's free of charge to the patient, it's free of charge to uh, the university, the exercise students, they do not receive anything for that, but the most important knowledge and experience and it's, it's a scenario that we are having here. Uh, it's working really well. And the dialysis units are really open it for that. And we are trying to expand it uh, in a few months if the pandemics leave us. And you might be thinking also, do the patients really like this design of wellness intervention? Like every semester, a month, a new exercise students, new people are being involved in the dialysis clinic. Yeah, most of the patients, they really enjoy it. Uh, and we have a pick from one of the patients. He's really happy to receive his uh, physical function report with some improvements at four months of, effort, of exercise. And well, our adherence hate rate is really good, really high. Most of the patients like the environment. And we truly believe that integrating these exercise students will in the future have a huge impact uh, into the lifestyle of these patients. So thank you very much for your attention. I'd like to acknowledge uh, University Center ESASP and the Vida Kidney Care for our partnership. Thank you. Great, thank you, Ayer. Uh, so we'll open it back up for questions. If anybody has any questions, comments. Um, so there's a question coming in. What type of exercises are used? Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you, Ria, for your question. Uh, we have been using intradialytic exercise with resistance training and aerobic training. Most of them are with resistance training because it's cheaper, but some of the clinics, we have some bicycle available. And so we prescribe combined or only aerobic or only resistance training. Another question, um, any collaborations with PT schools in Brazil? Yeah, uh, we have uh, some collaborations. I'm a lecturer. Uh, at one of them. Uh, so we are trying to increase the number of collaborations we have. Now we have collaborations with three uh, PT universities. And well, we are trying to expand it in more states here in Brazil. Uh, there is a question from Haik, uh, Brett. Can you read please? Um, who supervises the students? Okay, perfect, Haik. Uh, we only give the opportunity to the students to make these internships if we have a specialized exercise professional uh, hired to work at the dialysis clinic. So we have these partnerships in this partnership in four clinics here in Brasilia, Brazil. And in all these four clinics, we have a physiotherapist or an exercise physiologist hired to work as a dialysis staff. 
Great. Another question, uh, what are the variables used to monitor the patient's improvements? Thank you, Luana. Uh, we have been focusing on physical function variables such as hand grip strength, such as stand, time up and go, uh, gait speed, but also some uh, musculoskeletal phenotypes like sarcopenia and frailty. Uh, these are our main focuses now. But also the clinical variables uh, usually used in the monthly routine exams. Great, thank you, Hader. Um, I don't see any other questions coming through, so I think we'll keep it moving along and move to the next presenter. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hader. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, our next speaker is Dr. Mohammed Ali Tabibi, who has a PhD in exercise physiology. He is a researcher and university lecturer at the University of Tehran and is also the head of Isfahan Transplant and Special Patient Sports and the manager of Pardis Specialized Wellness Institute. Okay, first of all, I'd like to thank Grex Network for providing me with this great opportunity. Uh, should we be afraid of COVID-19? Is it that scary? Well, the statistics show that one year after the outbreak of coronavirus, only 1.5% of the world's population has been infected with it. And nearly 2.2% of these people have unfortunately lost their lives. The point is that uh, almost 98% of these people survived the infection, but the same statistics show that 700 million people, nearly 10% of the world's population have chronic kidney disease. But the same statistics is uh, of this 10%, 0.04% are patients who use dialysis services and the statistics show that five to seven percent are added to this number annually that in 2030 the number of dialysis patients is expected to rise to more than five and a half million people which means a hundred percent increase the point is that more than 50 percent of these patients die in less than just four four years after starting dialysis that is in 2030, two and a half million people will die just because they are on dialysis. Let's I share my screen. Hundreds of the world's news media are constantly reporting on the news of COVID-19 mortality rate. However, there is no mention of dialysis-related deaths, which will rise from 12th death caused in the world to fifth caused by 2030. Now the question is, should we be afraid of coronavirus or should we be afraid of being a dialysis patient? From the start of dialysis, treatment due to sedentary behavior and force on patient. That is for as long as three sessions per week for four hours per session, plus the consequent obligatory resting for two to five hours after each dialysis session, patient experience a gradual increase in sedentary behaviors on both dialysis and non-dialysis days and are forced to spend the active time of their passivity. One of the complications of this sedentary lifestyle is increased sarcopenia, which means muscle loss and muscle weakness increase significantly, leading to increased frailty. As a result, the patient increased the likelihood of falling and injury and fears caused by it. 
And then the patient suffers from chronic fatigue syndrome, a kind of fatigue that never ends and even increase day after day. And this very inactivity in turn increases the fatigue. Actually, the patient falls into a vicious cycle. Since activity muscles are one of the most effective anti-inflammatory factors in the human body. Uh, the rate of inflammation of the human system in these patients also increases significantly. Okay. These inflammations have widespread destructive effects on the human body, including increased uh, cardiovascular disease, bone disorders, and muscle loss. The above mentioned conditions, including increased inactivity, poor muscle function, and muscle loss, chronic fatigue, and inflammation will all reduce the patient's physical function in a physical and patients exercise capacity. The decrease in functional and exercise capacities in addition to patients intolerance of exercise activities will cause the patients reluctance and even fear of participating in regular exercise training and physical activity. Another disorder caused by inactivity in dialysis patient is anemia. The patient develops anemia progressively from the start of dialysis and enforced sedentary lifestyle. Osteoporosis problems and chance of fractures in these people will increase due to electrolyte disorders of phosphorus and calcium, which also affects development of heart disease. A lot of studies have shown that sedentary lifestyle, lack of muscle, and functional weakness, as well as increased inflammation, all increase the chance of developing type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure and mental disorders, such as depression. And the next event is that, according to mentioned points, an increase of comorbidities in dialysis patients, the number of hospitalizations also increases. And that again adds a hefty, a hefty 35% to their inactive period. The next stop in this disease, skeletal is disability, absolute immobility, the need to use a wheelchair and dependence on others. Unfortunately, the final stop for dialysis patients is death which occurs in less than five years after the start of dialysis loss of a human being. Now the question is, can the death of loved one be prevented? Can't a human being be brought back to life? Is patient doomed to death? Definitely not. Studies have shown that regular exercise during dialysis significantly increased patient's physical activity. It also increases and improves muscle strength, muscle function, probably muscle mass in these patients, reducing fatigue and frailty and improving sarcopenia. With the improvement of fatigue, there will be a decrease in frailty and sarcopenia. Hence, the patient's quality of life will improve day by day and he will start enjoying his normal life again. Because active muscles produce anti-inflammatory cytokines, such as IL-6, the level of inflammation in the body decreases as the patients become more active. These are not the only gift, uh, gifts of exercise because the improvement of traditional and non-traditional risk factors in this patient, we will see a reduction in cardiovascular disease and its complications such as heart attacks and hospitalization. With regular exercise and time, patients' exercise capacity will improve and their physical functioning will increase. 
And this is where our patient starts to improve and can enjoy life and is ready to live again. In an 18 month study in Iran on dialysis patients for four, six months of concurrent intradiolytic exercise and with a follow up of one year of no exercise, we saw that intradiolytic exercise prevented the death of 31 people and only one person passed away. That is only a teeny 5% of, of the population. This means 90% of these patients are still alive. The patients with, with an average age of over 60 years who have been on dialysis for more than two years and who have survived the COVID epidemic for a whole year. When only six months of regular exercise has resulted in such an amazing, amazing outcome and patients are still enjoying a high quality of life and liveliness resulting from exercise even a year later, despite of many questions remaining to be answered. Isn't it, uh, isn't it time to look at intradiolytic exercise as one of the most effective ways to provide the survive of, survival of these patients? So our advice for dialysis patients is be on the move, lie your dialysis moment to the fullest. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mohammed. Uh, so we'll open it up for questions, comments. Uh, question coming in, what do you mean by concurrent exercise? Actually, the concurrent exercise is a combination of uh, resistance exercise and aerobic in one session, such as uh, aerobic exercise, such as ergometers uh, and uh, aerobic moves manageable for patients uh, accompanied with music. And for resistance exercise, I suggested using uh, elastic bands, dumbbells, and uh, their body weight. Great. Um, is there a time? But the point is, Go ahead. But the Sorry. point is that you cannot prescribe a single set of exercise for all patients. Exercise um, exercise must be personalized for each uh, patient. Yes, great. Um, is there a certain amount of time that you kind of prescribe or try to get your patients to reach um, that you've seen as kind of um, you know beneficial than than other times, other less times? Uh, better time to uh, having uh, exercise. Uh, duration. So the duration of exercise. Have you seen you know improvements? Uh, you know with with fifteen or, or more, thirty or more, or is um, anything good? We started uh, in our study. We are started in thirty minutes with uh, each session, and we uh, gradually uh, increase it to sixty minutes per session. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions for Mohammed? Great, well, thank you so much, Mohammed. I appreciate that. That was a great talk. You're welcome.